Speaker. Um, I have to be honest that when I, I heard that we were debating this issue again, I genuinely thought, what am I going to talk about here? Because everything's already on the record. We've already discussed how the new single tier state pension is actually irrelevant to these women and will not solve the problem. We've also went to great lengths to explain how nobody is disagreeing with equalisation, nobody's calling on acts to be repealed. And then I came across this document that was sent uh, by a Conservative MP to a woman affected. And on the front page it says that the government can't do anything because WASPI are campaigning for all women born after April 1951 to be given their state pension from age 60. No, they are not. Yeah, that yeah. is not what yeah, they're yeah. asking. And the member for Gloucester earlier on was talking about misleading. That is misleading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. is against equalisation. Mm -hmm. Now, on Monday, I was actually I attended a, a media training course, you know, teaching you how to look at the camera, where to put your hands. And uh, one of the guys who was taking it said to me that as a politician, if you ever find yourself in a difficult situation where you think I'm in the wrong here and I need to get through this interview, he says, don't address the issue, just start talking about what you want to talk about. <laughs> and it hit me immediately, that's what this government's doing. Yeah. Every yeah. single yeah. time we don't talk about this, you talk about things that are completely irrelevant. Yeah. Now, yeah. the second page states, the national insurance credits are available for many people to help them build entitlement towards the state pension. National insurance payments also impact on entitlement to a range of other benefits. Pensions are not a benefit, yeah, they are a right. Yeah. One of my constituents described them, as, described them as a contract and that's exactly what they are. So let me make this very simple. Everybody in here has a phone. In fact, iPads that some people will be sitting on right now. We have a contract. If O2 or Virgin or whoever else three were to change the terms and conditions of our contract, we would have something to say about it. And if they waited 14 years to tell us that the terms and conditions had changed, <laughs> I'm sure that everybody in here would have something to say about it. And if they said on top of that, you're also going to be forced to live off your life savings because of the changes of that contract, you would be up in arms about it, and quite rightly so. So why are pensions any different here? Here, here. Now, yeah. We hear all the time about how, where's this money going to come from? Where are we going to find this? But the truth is, this comes back down to austerity. Yeah. This is austerity yeah, yeah. of choice. And the front bench can roll their head all they like. This is a choice. I have yet to hear of a general or a defence minister say, we can't bomb that country because we've exceeded our budget. We can't find the money. We, when we want to bomb Syria, we can find it. When we want to refurbish Westminster, we can find it. But when it comes to giving our pensioners their pension, we cannot do it. I just don't accept that whatsoever. Now, we've, we've spoken before. In fact, this debate actually reminds me of the tax credit debate. We were giving all these arguments as to how it was so unfair and the government responded with that exact response we don't have the money and then when the heat was turned up and political pressure was put on them all of a sudden one hand down the back of the couch and out comes oh, okay we can afford it we'll just do a u-turn quite rightly so which brings me on to my last point here how can we ignore the will of this house we have debated this in this chamber and voted 158 to zero how can we ignore that we debated it in the Westminster Hall that was packed to the gunnels with almost everybody speaking against this government. The government cannot continue to ignore the will of this House. And I'm no fan of Westminster. I don't think that's a surprise. I think it's more about ego than it is about issue. But the truth is, even the most politically savvy minds must be able to see that this is not party political. We have the chance to come together and do something that will earn you respect. So I think the government should take this chance and act. Here, here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.